Hey, welcome back. I am Adam of the Wall Twins and tonight we eat. I'm heating up the Blackstone griddle and air fryer combo for the first time for my first meal. Stick around while I dig in. I can't believe the Wall Twins. They're right there. That's one of them. That's the other one. I'm the other one. I've been so excited to make smash burgers for the first time. By the way, I'm making double bacon smash burgers. The reason I wanted to do this is because that bacon, the natural grease, is gonna really sink in and help with that initial seasoning. Also, the ground beef, I hope will do the same. We're also making steak fries as well as rallies or checkers seasoned fries in the air fryer, because why not do the whole thing at one time? Now, these are already in a bowl because I'm gonna season them the way my daughter really likes. So I've got my steak fries right here, and we're gonna go ahead and dash those with Lowry seasoning salt. Um, these are really good. We love seasoned steak fries. Reminds us of what you get at Red Robin. So we're just gonna dash a whole bunch of this in here. Kind of toss that around. Get this evenly coated so it's kind of all over on there. All right, now, first things first, gotta get the air fryer up to temperature. So we're gonna turn this on and we're gonna put it on high. Now, right here, fortunately, this gives us an understanding. High is between 425 and 475. We want this to be about 400 degrees, so I'm gonna turn it down just a little bit. It's got this warming drawer and then these two other air fryers. What makes this so awesome is I've got two different types of fries, so I can make one in this basket and make another one in this basket. So I'm just letting that warm up for just a minute and then we'll get going. All right, so in the first drawer here, we are going to put our seasoned fries. Seasoned fries are going right in the first drawer here. Now, what's key is really making sure that these are kind of spread out. This is a very large drawer. This is about to serving size for two people here. That's okay, we just kind of want those spread around and I'll take some time to shake those around halfway through. So then we get into our other drawer here, get the checkers fries here. All right, that's about good enough. Again, we don't want to we don't want to overcrowd so those don't cook. So that'll get us plenty for tonight's dinner. All right, those are in. I'm going to leave those going for about 15 minutes. So while we do that, it is time to get the bacon going here. You can typically cook bacon anywhere between three to 400 degrees on the griddle top. Uh, they often recommend a higher heat. However, the lower heat is going to save us a little bit of propane, but also help me to regulate the cook. I want these crispy. I don't want them overcooked. So I want to be very careful. Also, I've got family members who prefer a little more chewy than crispy. So I want to make sure that I don't overdo it. So I'm going to set this to about three, 350. Uh, medium heat. I'm only going to use three burners, two far burners. I'm going to use for my hamburgers. The middle one I'll use for my bacon, so I'll go ahead and get that to the temperature that I need that at. <laughs> one click start. I really appreciate that. So now those are on. I'm going to turn those down just a little bit. All to about medium high heat on the Blackstone. So now I'm going to scooch in so we can just watch this cook. That surface is starting to get hot, so let's get our bacon on here. Now I cut this bacon in half just to give us just to make it easier for when I'm applying this to the burgers. Now typically I like to put a little bit of the oil on before I cook anything. However, the bacon has so much grease in it that it's gonna it's gonna be just fine without laying any oil down. I don't need to put oil down for that, for the bacon. For my burgers, I will though. I put uh, both oil as well as butter, which is one of the secrets to making a really good smash burger. Brought the heat up just a little bit to start getting the sizzle going here. I don't wanna start my burgers until the bacon is really underway. The bacon takes a little bit longer to cook than the burgers will. The burgers will be quick. I'm gonna to try to get these to finish themselves off quickly. I love uh, buttering my buns and toasting them up. I've heard that mayonnaise tastes better. We're gonna try that today. So I brought my mayonnaise so I can try that out on my buns when I get ready to toast them, which will be towards the end because I don't want them toasting for too long. Question, are you a bacon flipper? I typically like to flip my bacon over and over again. And then I heard one flip and that's it. I've learned since that, you know what, some people are just flippers and some people are only a one flipper. Comment below, do you like to flip your bacon multiple times or just one and done? Give me just a little bit of more area, surface area to cook. I know that my last burner's not on. Woo! Oh man, that grease is gonna be fantastic. All right, so. 
get that going. Time to smash us some burgers. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lay down just a little bit of oil. Gonna lay down a little bit of oil right here where I'm gonna cook. Right in this area, just a little bit. That's just again to help with that seasoning, kind of pull out the seasons for the meat. Now, the other secret here, butter. Got two of them stuck together here. So butter, one of the magical secrets to a smash burger. As it all goes down the zip line. Here. <laughs> all right, kind of making a mess of things here. That's okay. Okay. So, you know what? I'm not on an even ground right here. This is obviously down, which I don't mind because it's going to pull a lot of that to the back, to the rear grease management system. But let me go ahead and get my meat on there while I still can. <laughs> Losing all my butter. Bring that back up. So I went down to Lowe's and was able to purchase a relatively cheap smash tool. I got my parchment paper. The importance of the parchment or wax paper is just to make sure that that burger, when you smash it down, doesn't stick. Now the key to getting a good sear on it is you want it to smash and hold it for about 10 to 13 seconds. So I'm going to do that there. Use my uh, cooking utensils here. about 10 seconds. We want to smash, smash, but that, that makes them a little bit bigger, a little bit thicker than I like for my smash burgers. I'm going to help smash these here, use my shaper, and then these. So that's a good, good, uh, I want to make sure I got some good size on these. I want to make sure I've got room to cook them. Okay. So like I said, 10 to 13 seconds on these. Now, that smasher was relatively good, but it left, left them a little thicker than I want. I want some thin smash burgers. So while the tool is good, and these, these burgers are each about three, uh, three ounces. I, I usually like closer to four or five ounces. Make them a little bit bigger. Let me get my shape here. Smash this down. Now the idea is to get a really good sear on the bottom of these. So I'll let these cook for about a minute and a half, two minutes. Get a good sear down on those. Get a good smash there. Let's get our last one here. I'm gonna start pulling some of these, moving some of these just a smidge. That last one smashed up good. So I've got good shape on those. Whew. The last one went a little wonky on me. I'm okay with that. Smash burgers aren't gonna be perfect and that's okay. So my bacon is starting to crisp up on the one side just a little bit. Ah, for some of them anyways. So my hotter, air, hotter region over here. Ooh, it's starting to crisp up good. So clearly, it's burning a little bit hotter over here. But we go get me some paper towels. I'm on it. Thanks, bud. Now, as soon as these burgers are ready, they're getting two types of cheese, at least the ones that I'm gonna eat. I make them on a double, uh, bacon double. I'm gonna put some American cheese on that. Now, I've learned American cheese pairs really well with so many other things, condiments and whatnot, including other cheeses. So right here, we've got uh, Sam's Club, the Colby and Monterey Jack cheese. This is really good on, its, on the burger by itself, but I wanna combine those. So I'm gonna lay down the American cheese to kind of melt into the burger, and then I'm gonna layer atop of that Colby and Monterey 
jack on top of that to really, really bring home that flavor. Okay, so these are starting to gray up the side just a little. I'm gonna give them just a little bit longer to cook. Checking out the fries, seeing how they're coming along. Okay, they're warming up. They're still a little soft, but it is warm, so I'm just tossing this just to make sure we get some good uh, movement on those. Same thing. Now, this one I might leave in just a little bit longer because these ones, oh, you know what? These are actually crisping up a little bit better than those steak fries are. There you go, you can see the sear on here. That's what I'm looking for. When you get that good sear on that outside, that no, you know you're getting in the right direction here. Okay, this one may need just a little, couple more minutes here. Same with that one, so I'm gonna move these to my hot zone here. Move them right here in the middle. Get these all nice and close. So some of these I'm gonna be able to pull off a little bit quicker than some of the others. Some of this bacon is really looking ready to go too. So I just turned on my fourth zone because I really want to make sure that I get this cooked up. Uh, move this around. Mm, there we go, look at that, starting to get some good color. This is why I flip, I flip until I know what I want it to look like. Like some of these are almost done. Oh man, those are gonna be so good. Now this is the thick cut bacon. We got thick cut applewood smoked bacon here. So that piece is just about ready to pull off. Oh, nice sear on those. All right, so there we go. Now that those are all ready to go, I'll get my cheese on these. Do an American, everybody gets American. Now this isn't this isn't the craft singles. This also we got in the big bulk at uh, Sam's Club. I love this sliced cheese. It has such good flavor. And as odd as it sounds, it doesn't have as much of the processed flavor as craft. Although I've used craft hundreds of times in my day, I've never never shied away from it. But once introduced to this American cheese, this is what I've gone with. I love this cheese. So now that that's on there, let's trap that in with the Colby Jack or the Colby and Monterey Jack rather. So just a couple of these are getting this. Two of these will just be plain, plain American cheese. Everybody in the family loves American cheese, but only a couple of us really like that Colby Jack. So, we want that cheese to, to melt on there. We want this cheese to melt really good on there. That American cheese is almost perfect. Best way to really get this to steam up, just hit a little water in here. Let this start steaming up. And we're gonna lock that steam in there with that. Some of that bacon is ready to come off, which is perfect because you can actually, oh nice. This bacon is cooked to perfection. So some of these still need a little bit longer to go, which is good. Just A-OK -okay by me. This lets me make sure I'm getting everything done just the way I need it to. Don't want to overcook the burger, so I'm going to pull those out here in just a second. And then I'm going to get my buns going here. So look at, look at how nice these that <laughs> melted up. So those are ready to go. Set those off to the side for just a second. Oh, oh man. That cheese, are you kidding me? You see that cheese? <laughs> That's how we do. Those American cheeseburgers melted really nice. I think my family's gonna be really happy about those. Last thing I need to do is get my buns ready. So I just have run-of-the-mill Pepperidge Farms uh, sesame seed buns. Uh, I'll be honest, not my favorite buns, but these are great. They're larger, so it's gonna be perfect for these smash burgers. Now, I'm gonna hit it with the mayonnaise like I was, uh, told is a really good thing to do. So I'll get my mayonnaise on here, spread it up. Just gonna throw those face down right where my burgers were. 
All right, get my buns on there. The second one's on, let's take a look. Those are crisping up nice. I got my buns, my buns toasted just about to perfection, right how I like them. So I'm gonna set that down and let's build this burger out real quick while those last pieces of bacon are cooking. Got the two pieces of, of uh, meat on there. Then I got three slices of bacon. I love that. Typically, I love to dress this burger with all sorts of uh, condiments. I'm a, I like it super saucy. A little ketchup, uh, mustard, ma extra mayonnaise. Well, let's take a look at that. Oh, man, look at that cut. Look at that. It, that cheese just going all the way through there. Steak fries done here. Let's put some of those out here. You get a good look at that. Oh man. All right, we've seen that image there now. Now, moment of truth. Let's see how good this is. Ollie to that. Cheers, my brother. Mm. Oh my gosh. Perfect choice on the cheeses. Holy cow. The way the American cheese melted into the burger was exactly like I had hoped with that Colby and Monterey Jack cheese on top. Really got it perfect with that bacon. This thing was perfect. I'm gonna get one more bite, make sure I get a lot of bacon. I just got a little piece of bacon on that one. Mmm. That may just be the best burger I have ever made. In fact, it, it is. It's the best burger I've ever made. Thank you, Blackstone. This was awesome. If you've got a recipe, something you'd like to see me griddle up on this, let me know. I'm willing to try anything. I've got a bunch of recipes that I want to try. I've been doing the electric griddle for years. I'm excited to bring these recipes out here. If this is your first time here and you enjoyed this and you want to see more, don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss anything. Typically, there are two of us. We are freakishly identical twins that love to do food reviews and now these cooking videos. But with this social distancing right now, bread is stuck up in Gainesville. I'm down here in Central Florida. We don't get to spend as much time together, but rest assured that as soon as everything gets back to normal, we'll be doing more griddling together and that's gonna be a blast. But with that, I bid you adieu. And don't forget to like and subscribe. Have a good one. Till next time.